Good morning, Mara. Good morning. I just noticed that I pronounced your name the Latvian way with the Latvian R, Mara. Ah. <laughs> Great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, how we started. We started with uh, names and introducing ourselves. And this has been a nice journey yeah. together. I loved it. Yeah, me too. It was really special. Um, and particularly for me, I know you have spoken a lot through live Facebook and on live YouTube before, but it was my first time doing it ever. So it was um, wonderful to have a partner in it. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful to have a partner. Uh, because I hadn't uh, talked about coaching uh, before, yeah, <laughs> live online. So, um, yeah, it was in a way the first time for me, but not uh, generally. I have been, uh, yeah. But so um, I have some thoughts and feelings how it felt for me. But I would like to hear uh, if you would share uh, share it with us how it felt for you and uh, maybe you gain some insights because in coaching, we, uh, we are about insights, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, what stuck out the most for me as I thought about it, um, was something we talked about when we were discussing art and creativity, which I think was two days ago. And we sort of talked about creating from this open space, having a basic idea, but you know, it's not a full map and just going for it. And that's kind of like what this was for me. And you had said in that conversation that your art for you is like self-coaching in that way, because you're seeing what comes up for you in the moment. So for me, um, it, it, talking um, publicly, I usually have more of a plan, uh, especially as an actor. So a lot of times I will have a script. So there's a sense of much more of a set way things are gonna go. Um, so this was really fun for me to, we had a topic and a few little, maybe we'll do this, maybe we'll do that, but we let ourselves create this conversation from an open space. And I got to see for myself what ideas came to me or what thoughts and what came up for me and um, witness how I, sh how I let myself show up inside of this open space. So it was a bit like, that like that uh, self coaching in that way for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And uh, it's interesting that uh, it came up when I was summarizing in my uh, mind. Um, basically, the same thing came up. Yes, that this was like a uh, like an artwork that I create. Mm. Yeah. Maybe I was not exactly thinking about uh, self coaching. But it is it was self coaching because when I do art, it is self coaching, like I mentioned. Yeah. yeah so so because um, often I would imagine what I'm going to paint. I would just have some a vague picture in my mind, mm -hmm. and it's interesting when I actually get to the canvas and start creating something totally different. Yeah. It turns out, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, that's just uh, amazing. And, but we want, to, if we want to relate this to coaching, I've noticed also when I talk about plans with my clients, when they have future goals or, or plans, uh, they have some vague idea in their mind what they want for mm -hmm. themselves in the future. And when we actually start working on it and breaking things down and uh, finding reasons, purposes, uh, or you know, doing that deep coaching work, uh, those plans uh, turn out to be quite different than what they had imagined uh, yeah. when we started. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I like that we called it a journey because that's, uh, that's the point, right? Like uh, this whole, our lives are a journey in and of themselves. It, it never goes how we plan it to go. <laughs> No, yeah, never. <laughs> we try to steer the ship, but the, <laughs> the ocean and the wind and the waves will take us where they'll take us. <laughs> you know, it's kind of scary when you say it, when you actually say it out loud that it never goes the way uh, we want it. Because yesterday we were talking about death. Mm. Uh, and I said how I would like it to be for me. Yeah. And uh, oh my, <laughs> what if it turns out to be totally differently, which we probably will be, huh? I better don't uh, think too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh I well I feel like sharing some thoughts about that which yes I feel like 
just having in your being that that's likely what likely is what's going to happen you'll be more open to the surprise of how yes. it will <laughs> yes like, like your birth you were second birth you were prepared mm -hmm. in a sense yes you know? but I, I'm sure it how it happened you could not have fully prepared for oh no of course not yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I basically only knew that I wanted it to happen in water wow. and that I wanted to uh, relax and meditate those two things yeah but wow. uh, the rest of course I didn't I couldn't prepare for it <laughs> um so but talking not about that uh, far future ahead as our us dying and hopefully that's uh a long time from now mm -hmm. uh, talking about the future plans that are closer maybe very soon or uh in a year or uh, whatever do you do you have any future plans and uh, if you do are there any that you would like to share with us um yeah i'm actually developing a vip package right now um where i would work with someone exclusively for a whole year um and it would really be going deep into their spiritual selves and exploring the sacredness of each individual moment um and and just working through the whole year to deepen that sense of intimacy and um i plan to include some plant medicines for the right candidate if that interests them um, but how I really like to work with people is to help them integrate um, big, big, um, profound openings in their lives. So there would be an aspect of expanding the, their consciousness or how they're perceiving their reality. And then uh, mixed with the practicality of, you know, we can go out there, but how do we bring it down into the day to day? And how can we create practical tasks and goals from that expanded place and so um that's something i'm working on right now working out the details for that <laughs> mm -hmm. so what would be a perfect candidate could you describe what you have in mind yeah someone who is ready to understand themselves at the next deeper level and then the deeper level under that um who's ready to explore what is beyond their current perceiving how they're currently perceiving everything and they're ready to be challenged with what is valuable about their life pretty much what is valuable about who they are as a person and what what their life is about and really be challenged to go deeply inward um, with that question Mm, that sounds very interesting and uh, of course I know why you uh, prepared the VIP um, offer because we are in the same group where we are being coached by a master coach Christina Berkeley and uh, she gave us that task to, to um, work on a VIP package and I've been working on my package as well and um, uh, those people who have followed me for a while or maybe have seen me speaking as a public speaker uh, prepared speeches I have humorous speech where I also act like an actress uh, in a way <laughs> which is not a normal speaking <laughs> and it's it's all scripted and I talk about my um, hurdles in relationships and mm -hmm. uh, my marriages uh, in a humorous way um, because yeah that that's the way I think that uh, to look at ourselves to not take ourselves too seriously always <laughs> um yeah so my package is going to be for people who for couples mostly yeah mm -hmm. or uh and as you noted in one of our conversations that uh, i start out that the 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 difference how we approach the client and start working with the clients is uh, I look at the language as a mm -hmm. linguist by the very background my first education so um, the the problems always arise in communication mm -hmm. always and what I have been thinking about is that people when they get married they design vows and uh, they probably take some scripts from somewhere else somebody gave some ideas and then they develop vows something that sounds good mm 
yeah and just to present and everybody goes wow and you know but how much uh, have they actually felt into the words that they yeah. are saying mm -hmm. yeah and um for that would be for people who are prepared to get uh, married, but also for people who would like to renew their, their vows and maybe people who uh, have uh, some hurdles in their relationships and they want to work on them to overcome them. Um, that would be the basics, the vows, but that, then I will also create uh, wonderful experiences. And you know how we talked about sexuality and experiences and uh, things like that. Um, and we talked about orgasm as well. And uh, there are there are experiences that can can compare to orgasm, but that is not orgasm. Mm -hmm. So um, I am preparing surprises, and uh, we would start out by uh, with uh, filling out or questionnaire or uh, just a conversation, and to understand deeply each. Uh, partner in a couple and uh, yeah and then we would work on the vows and I would separately mm -hmm. work on that experience for the couple and that will not be at the place where they live mm -hmm. it will be elsewhere so that is something that I'm designing right now That's beautiful I love that uh, especially because you had talked about being an interpreter um in your uh, in the past and so this you're like the interpreter for the mm -hmm. the, the couple for the love <laughs> the interpreter of love <laughs> that is actually how i really really understand life and when i hear people talking about uh their faith mm -hmm. and people belong to various religions and some people don't uh, consider themselves being religious but they say universe supports me and talk about universe or whatever mm -hmm. um, yeah I see similarities and I really um, don't like the you know insisting on one truth Mm -hmm. one one truth it's um it's really in coaching we know that everybody has their own truth yeah and uh, because everybody sees things differently and has their own truth the key is to communicate to mm -hmm. try to understand each other better because then we'll see that uh, there's often no reason for conflicts and arguments yeah and even um people of the same faith and the same very similar backgrounds, upbringings, it could even live on the same street. What a one word, you know, let's say the word uh, happiness, that doesn't actually mean the same thing to both people, like what they feel in their body or how they envision it or pain or disappointment or excitement, you know, the, the same word it, it, to a different person has a totally different meaning. That's exactly right. And when we meet somebody and we, we find that person appealing, we, we like the person or even us, our relationship, we, we see the commonalities, we see how we are similar. And then we uh, notice some differences, but then we reduce them saying that, oh, it's the same thing, you know, but when you live together with a partner for a longer period of time, those differences actually come up. And uh, it, it's how our, um, our minds are uh, pre-programmed to see those similarities so that we actually can get together and start live together. But uh, it's worthwhile to really um, research those differences and to accept things as they are, mm -hmm. actually are. And to, yeah, not to put the blinders on and uh, pretend that uh, uh, it's not there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we started out by, yeah, by talking about these things. And uh, I, I was talking about your name and, um, and you mentioned, um, yeah, this linguistic aspect in our manifestos. Would you, would you like to conclude this with uh, some aspects from your manifesto and what that manifesto actually is? Because you have a manifesto and I have a manifesto and people might not even know what we are talking about. <laughs> yes. Um, in our work, we were in, in the same group we've been talking about with our coach, Christina Berkeley. She asked us to create 
manifestos, which are um, the ideas or the way I viewed it was the ideas and concepts that I bring to the table and will work with a client on. Um, and my, I have titled mine the manifesto for a deeply intimate life. And uh, one, one point, bullet point on there for me came up um, while we were talking about being in this open space and seeing what happens in the moment, even if it's unexpected, is that our one thing I like to teach or talk about is that our instincts are wisest. So they, they will often be what are driving us. We plan to do one thing, but find ourselves saying another or making a different choice or even backing away from something. Um, sometimes people think, oh, that was my fear taking over. And it might have been, but that was also an instinct that was protecting you in that moment from perhaps something you weren't fully ready for. Um, and of course there's nuances to that, but that's one point is our instincts are wisest. So seeing what happens in a moment how we respond, where our body is actually taking us is um, a huge uh, lesson point I, I like to look at with people so they can actually get to understand how their instincts are working for them. And, and where, excuse yeah, me. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just one, uh, wondering uh, where, where can people read your manifesto? Uh, they can read it right on my website, uh, maraleegilbert.com slash coaching. I have um, a page for my performance work and a page for my coaching on the same website. So it's maraleegilbert.com slash coaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my, my manifesto is on my website. It's also uh, my name, ilzb.com slash about. Yeah. that's where that's where it's sitting so ilzb as you see my name um on uh, on the screen ilzb.com slash about and um i just wanted to bring up another aspect from my manifesto that i haven't uh, i don't think i have uh, stressed in during you know our conversations is that um being uh, somebody who lives away from uh, my birth country mm. and being an immigrant basically so to say we have uh, a lot of Im immigrants still in this country uh, and um, how you start feeling um, as the almost the native of the country still respecting mm -hmm. your home country not home country because the home country right now is this country for me but my birth country that's that's how I call it um, yeah, so uh, you will notice that aspect as well. And this is also um, a profile of my clientele. I have uh, people who have, uh, who are in relationships with uh, a person who comes from another country, or they are from a country, a country that is different than their home country presently, mm -hmm. and uh, how they communicate with their partners, and how those cultural differences mm -hmm. um, yeah, may play a role in the relationship, yeah. whether it's successful or not successful. And, and uh, successful relationship really is a relationship that's not abandoned, although sometimes it can be concluded because you need to go off to uh, start a next one and that one has yeah. completed its purpose. But, but, but generally, yeah, do you want to still work on it? And then uh, there's, there are a lot of codes in my manifesto because there is also the line which I believe in um, interpret for those who don't understand, don't over explain because wisdom emerges in silence. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Of, often we don't need to explain. Often the key is to listen. Yeah, yeah. This is making me think of um, one of my most beautiful relationships. It started out as a romance and now um, he's one of my best friends. Um, I had a relationship with a, he was born in Cuba, um, raised in Miami, but uh, um, strongly identified, of course, where he was born, as well as also being raised in America, just what you were sort of talking about. Um, and we, we did, we did feel this clash at times of 
our two cultures and really had to work to understand things I wouldn't understand or, you know, why are you speaking to me with this type of dynamic? And he would say, why are you speaking to me with that type of dynamic? Or uh, why aren't you accepting the way I'm telling you this? Um, and we had to really work through our cultural differences and understand each other. Mm -hmm. But there was a moment where um, I was writing a lot at the time too. Um, and we were living together where it's, it sort of struck me that the, when I felt the most, oh, uh, nothing else mattered when I was, whatever we were arguing about or not understanding about each other. Um, when I would sit back and just watch him working, he was a, he is a musician. Um, I just watch him working, sitting at his computer and he was a brilliant uh, film composer, composing and watching the screen um, or just watch him cooking or just watch him sleeping. And there was the silence. Yeah. Uh, there didn't, I just loved him. You know, there wasn't anything more needed but to witness who he was mm -hmm. and our cultural differences or how we were viewing them and perceiving them didn't matter in those silent moments. Yeah. Yeah. And probably trusting and believing that he wanted the best for your relationship. Yeah. Which yeah. maybe when expressed in words, not always come across. Yeah. We both, uh, yeah, we mm -hmm. both wanted the best for our relationship and we had that lost in translation thing happening. Oh um, yeah. Oh yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's very familiar <laughs> to me. And I see that in uh, um, the relationship and with uh, people, what they bring up, the people who I work with or who I have served in various roles as a coach or as an interpreter or, um, yeah, consultant or trainer. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Thank you, Mara, for this journey. Yeah. It was lovely. One more time, your your website is maraleegilbert.com. And if people want to uh, read your manifesto, it's slash uh, what was coaching. It? Coaching slash coaching. Yes. And my website is ilzb.com. And the manifesto uh, is at slash about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you so much i will follow your journey and of course we'll meet each other in the group yes absolutely this has been wonderful i'm so grateful to you <laughs> i am too grateful to you thank you so so much and have a wonderful day <laughs> bye